In this video, I'll take a look at the Luminar AI Beta. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador. And in this video, I'll take a look at the Luminar AI Beta. And this is not a test or a review because, like I said, I'm looking at the beta version. But I'm going to go through some of the main features and I'll also share my opinion on them. Luminar AI is a brand new software from Skylum. But this video is not sponsored by Skylum or um, I have no connections with them. But I do have an affiliate link down below, so if you think that this might be your software and you'd like to purchase it, please use my link down below and you'll support my channel at the same time. But before you order anything, <laughs> watch the whole video and uh, hear my opinion, because I don't want you to buy something that you're going to be disappointed with. I'm going to start by looking at the user interface in general, and it certainly looks a lot like Luminar 4 with some added features. But Skylum claims this is a totally new application, so we just have to take their word for it. But the similarities with Luminar 4, it's not a bad thing. Especially if you have used Luminar 4, you will feel right at home with Luminar AI. Let's first talk about the Luminar catalog, because I think a proper organized catalog is a must for every photographer. As soon as you accumulate more than a few hundred pictures, you're gonna need some sort of organized catalog or archive that you can browse and you can find the pictures that you're looking for. And the first thing I'd like to mention is that the Luminar AI catalog is not compatible with Luminar 4 catalog. So you have to create a new catalog or update your catalog. I'm not sure how the process goes. And I'm also not sure if your previous, if you have a Luminar 4 and you had some ratings or some other uh, organize, organizing <laughs> in your previous Luminar 4 catalog, I'm not sure if they will transfer to Luminar AI catalog automatically. And also the rating system is uh, quite basic in the Luminar catalog. You have only three ways to rate your pictures, and those are favorite, reject, or unmarked, and that's all. You don't have, for example, a star rating or anything like that. And I really think a star rating would be a, a really nice addition, and maybe some other ways to rate your pictures as well, like color flags or something. But at least in this beta version, the only rating system is this three-way system, favorite, rejected, or unmarked. And then about the search parameters in Luminar AI catalog. You can search the file name, folder name, date, or file extension. And <laughs> in my case, that's pretty bad because I almost never use these search parameters. My most used search parameters, for example, in Lightroom library are the camera model, the lens model, um, and uh, the keywords that I add when I import my pictures. And Luminar AI has none of those. But these are highly personal. I was talking about this with my very good friend Peter Forsgaard, and he said he uses file names uh, very often when he searches pictures in his library. But in any case, I think it's good to know these limitations that uh, AI, a Luminar AI library has. But other than that, the Luminar AI library works like any other photo archive or library. You can view only RAW pictures, only JPEGs if you like, and you can uh, view the pictures by the date, of course. And now let's talk about the templates, which are something new. The templates are essentially like presets, but Skylum calls them templates. And that is the strong point of Luminar AI. It's extremely easy to get started with image editing, especially if you're a beginner and you really don't know where to start. With these presets or templates, sorry, templates, it's uh, easy to get um, 
some kind of look or edit two pictures with one click. And here are some pictures that I imported to Luminar AI for test purposes. And as soon as I select one of the pictures and I go to uh, the templates, Luminar AI will recommend me some presets or templates, sorry, templates that might be suitable for this particular picture. And for this picture, even though it looks like a portrait to me or street portrait, whatever, Luminar AI first recommends me influencer uh, templates and let's see uh, how they will transform my picture. The first one is called Nighthawks. Well, um, it's a black and white preset or template. Cozy Den looks like this. Uh, then the next one is Eventide. Mm, a bit too uh, maybe dark to my taste and strange color. Evening Glow, no thanks. Light to wash, okay, it looks washed out, not for me. And Winter Refugee. Of these uh, six, uh, this looks the best to me, but it's not really what I want. You can revert to original by right-clicking the, the picture and uh, go to adjustments and revert to original, like so. But this is a portrait after all, and I want to see some portrait templates, even though they are not recommended for some reason for this picture. Let me choose these easy portraits here, and that includes five templates. The first one is called High Key. All right, it's a little bit lighter tone, a bit too washed out to my taste. Next one is Tack Sharp. It's a little bit better, a little bit more contrast. Then the next one is Fade, mm, all right, not bad, not bad, but not my favorite either. That next one is Vignette, this looks slightly better uh, also. And then the last one is called Low Key, which I don't like, it's too cool to my taste. And maybe a little bit too low contrast too. I think I like the Vignette the best of these five. The next picture is going to be a landscape picture. It's a picture that I shot on my photo walk the other day. And I have a video of that photo walk. It's up here, just in case you haven't seen it. Please take a look. It was quite fun. I was taking some wide angle pictures in uh, when it was snowing. And now let's check out this picture. It's here and uh, the recommendations that I get for this is not surprisingly, nature. And let's see, the the first one is a black and white, uh, or s yes, it's a black and white uh, template. Well, it's not bad. Then the next one is sunny and sunny small. Well, this is kind of nice. I like this one uh, quite a lot. And then it's macro world. This is also not bad. Distinctive Drops is the next one, also not bad. Best Close-Up, also not bad. And Arctic Atoms is the next one or the last one, and this is also not bad. So, all in all, this uh, landscape picture was easier for the templates, and I, I kind of like all of them, or none of them looks really like uh, uh, appalling to me. And I might even use some of these for this particular picture. And like I said earlier in this video, these templates are a very easy way to get started with image editing. But you can also fine tune each template in the edit section, just in case you're not happy with the uh, template as it is. If you go to the edit, every adjustment that was used in your selected uh, template has this small dot in front of it and you can expand each of these um, uh, adjustments and fine-tune the sliders uh, the way you like them if you are not happy with the template as it is. The edit section of Luminar AI is uh, full of tools for manual editing too. So if you want to start from scratch and edit your pictures fully manually from start to finish, you can certainly find enough tools in Luminar AI to do that. It's hard for me to imagine that 
anyone would need more tools to edit their pictures, their raw pictures. Of course, if you do some composite images, then you're gonna need another application altogether, like Photoshop or something similar. But for raw processing your pictures, I'm sure Luminar AI offers all the tools you might need or you might imagine you need. And then I have something to complain also. I have the same complaint I had uh, with the Luminar 4, and that's the missing lens profiles. Skylum has promised that the Luminar AI will have lens profiles, but at least this beta version does not have them. And I think they are essential because almost every mirrorless camera relies heavily relies on software correction when it comes to lens distortions especially. Luminar AI as well as Luminar 4, they have automatic distortion um, correction, but it can't handle all kinds of distortions. So I really, really wish they will include lens profiles in the final release of Luminar AI when it comes out. Obviously, the application is full of other features as well, but I don't wish to cover them too deeply in this uh, video because this is only a beta version. But here are some like final thoughts or conclusion after using this beta version for some time now. The Luminar AI is certainly a very fast way to get started with image editing. And it's suitable for people who don't like to edit their pictures, but they still would like to have some sort of edit in their pictures. It's a bit uh, controversial, I think, but that's the way it is. However, there's also a danger that if you start using those templates, that you only use those templates. And uh, of course, um, everyone else is using those same templates as well. So uh, after a while, they are hardly anything unique. So in order to learn something, you at some point you have to start exploring those manual controls, manual sliders as well. And then you can, you may get something unique or something of your own too. And one more thing, at this stage, at this beta stage, the application is not a speed demon, it's quite slow. But that might also get better when the final production or final release version comes out finally, sometime this month, December 2020. And if you still think this might be your software and you like to purchase it, please use the affiliate link down below. You'll support my channel at the same time if you do that. Thank you so much for watching and uh, see you in the next one.